Love you all. Are you ready to build with me <laughs> today? I do have a shim, I, I do have a nativity set from the Dollar Tree. And I, as I started, I wanted to only create the base and um, simply install uh, my, um, my nativity set that I've got from the Dollar Tree. Of course, I need to align it and see how that's going to work. And I have to tell you, I had a hard time figuring out where the figurine should go. <laughs> well, I did not know where to put the three kings. So guess what? I think this is the way. I do not know. But I think the baby Jesus has to go on the back. So as I'm trying to think, how am I going to build this? I figured, man, I've never de dealt with shims. And so I am actually on a mission right now. I wanted to build the uh, uh, a shim tree that is going to be in the, uh, in the uh, shape of a uh, shed and surrounding for my nativity set. So I am officially on the uh, uh, shim tree bandwagon. <laughs> okay, so as you know me, I do not measure. I'm just going to first lay it out my plan, try to see how should I arrange, try to see where my manger should be. Should I just remove the whole thing? I, I mean, I do not know. There's so many unknowns, but if you follow me for some time, there are, um, my project usually takes turns left and right until it's complete. So now I do have figured out my bottom of the, uh, of my little tree and I'm going to just start, and, you know, do my cuttings. I am actually trying to decide uh, which way do I go. Do I put the little manger on the bottom of my tree or should I make it floating someplace in the middle? But you know what, that we will decide later. So now I'm on a mission to cut my sides. <clears throat> so as you can see is, I, I'm, shims are very easy to cut. You can use the scissors. I mean, my scissors are the special ones. I mean, I've cut literally everything with it. So now I decided, because I do not want to measure, I decided to create my little uh, layout. And I would say is I leave the, for the roof, I'm going to leave distance, um, you know, I lay them down with the distance of maybe a little bit over an inch. So I'm creating my little design right there. And now I'm going to make sure that the other one is done. And I'm going to just simply pick one by one and mirror um, one to another. And it's so much fun. I love that kind of project. Okay, so I think I got it, but I think I need to make my roof line a little bit thicker to have a little bit more of a profile. But I think for now it's all good. So now I'm going to make sure that everything nicely, um, you know, fits on the top. And of course, um, you know, you again, I cut one based on the one on the left. So, I mean, on one side. And then, of course, I measure to make sure that they are a similar size. So see, it seems like four of them on each side. I am satisfied. I don't want to make it too thick of a roof. And I think it's fine right now. <laughs> This is how I work. So now I need to make sure that my bottom, you know, that I cut earlier, it's working. I do like the profile and it seems everything is good. I will put for sure get this project onto my uh, blog so you can see a little bit more of the details and I will for sure um, provide you with the more details and measurements. So right now, oops, I stick my head in there. So right now I'm trying to position my manger. So I think it's time to paint, but in order for me to uh, make um, all, you know, less of a work, I decided to write on it. It doesn't work. So I'm going to leave them in little groupings, roof line left on and you know on the left the right one all together so i don't have to later do the thinking twice so now i do have a wa waverly dark wax and i'm just applying this with the uh, um with the wipe the baby wipe and now i'm going to just simply smear all of it so now here it goes to my roof line i'm telling you at the beginning i was thinking oh why don't i just you know do one by one but why should i stain my uh, pieces my shim on the inside so guess what i have to close my wax and go back to the gluing portion because we do not want it to do too much work right so i'm measuring again making sure that i didn't mix up my sizes so now i'm just going to take the uh, uh again put them line them up put the, uh, both sides and then i'm going to just simply take the hot glue and glue mirror 
each of the groupings so that that's going to be much faster. Okay, so last of the uh, uh, of the uh, measurements is done. And now I'm just going to make sure that they are all together as, because I do need to glue both of them at the same uh, way. So I'm starting with the one um, on the lower screen. I'm adding the hot glue and look at this. I'm just trying to copy my layout on the right side. So now I'm adding a lot of the hot glue, getting another stick, adding again a lot of glue, and I'm trying to make sure that my distance is as close as they can be. Obviously, if, if I am, you know, a quarter of an inch here and there off, it really doesn't matter. It just, you know, whatever. I'm just trying to be as close as I can without measuring, L literally just applying and following the template. So that's what I, I'm going to do it. So now the other side, obviously, is going to be much easier. I don't have to worry that things will fall apart because I'm just going to simply do um, things uh, faster. Okay, so I'm on the last stages on the uh, other side of my roof line, hot gluing, making sure that I am aligning things nicely. But because the shims are not smooth, you know, it is good to have this little character that's happening in your roof line. Okay, so they all done. Last final measurements before we are going to um, stain them and do the same th the same uh, process as we did before. So as you can see, is this time because it's a bigger piece. I took the paintbrush and I'm just going to apply not evenly here and there, all over my uh, shims, sides, back, everything, because it's going to be visible. Now I'm taking the baby wipe and I'm going to simply smooth all that uh, wax all around it. It is really, I mean, as I always say is, it's, I do want it to have that, you know, uneven look and super rustic one. So I'm just not applying everywhere, trying to get as much as of an interest as I can get. But of course, if you follow me for some time, I am going to be sticking details left and right. So I'm going, I think I am going to do some kind of a fine, fun finish on the roof line. So it's again, I'm repeating the same thing um, on the other side, applying the Waverly Wax and wiping it off. I am so glad that I actually was thinking that I did not stain every single one of those pieces. But okay, so now I'm also thinking, what am I going to do the two figurines? And I think I'm going to do the same way. I'm just going to uh, wax the figurines the same way. But because they are uh, made out of a different wood, they're going to look uh, more polished off. So it's again, I'm adding wax all over every single side of my uh, figurines. Because I am not sure if I'm going to leave the background to my uh, little menu that I'm building, I decided to obviously paint it on both sides. Okay, so now it's time to dry all out because we need to add additional detail. Okay, all is dry. I just switched my paper towels and now I'm just going to use some crackle technique on it. So, of, of course, if you never crackled uh, before, I'm using the Elmer's glue and distributing um, that on the sides of my um, shims. And it's again, as I mentioned earlier, it is not the typical, um, typical crackling process because the shims are not really that smooth. So I'm not going to really worry. And if it does not come a lot, I just want a little pieces of crackle here and there. So with that, you usually do want it to slightly dry to still have the, uh, um, the glue sort of on the tacky side before you're going to start to apply the paint. So here I have acrylic paint and I'm just adding a nice strip all throughout my uh, pieces. And then I'm just going gently without pushing, adding too much pressure on the glue that's underneath. I'm going to distribute the paint around. The trick to a crackle is to make, making sure that the um, glue is not mixing with the uh, paint. Um, obviously, that's why you need a softer brush. 
And of course, you need to make sure that you are not applying, going back and forth with the paintbrush uh, in the same spot. So now it's a drying time. It will take a little while and I am really hopeful that I'm going to squeeze the crackle here and there. And it seems like I am. This is exactly what I wanted, just gentle crackle. Not much, um, not a big one. It takes a little while uh, to dry, but you know what? With the, uh, the heat, it goes much faster. So now I decided that I am going to do exactly the same thing to all the pieces that I have. But obviously, I'm going to only do the little manger here. Not a manger, the, uh, the stable. And then I'm just going to do the base of the baby Jesus um, uh, cradle. And I think that will be uh, enough. I don't think I don't need anything else. And of course, the base of it. So I'm going to do the same thing to um, this little manger, right? And I, and the, yeah, the manger. And then um, I think hopefully that's a big of a surface for me to get some crackle. And of course the base, as I said earlier. So again, a little bit of the heat gun action right there. And I already see some crackle forming up top. I was not expecting to have a lot of it uh, there since the surface is super small but you know what you can see it right now the little crackle is forming there okay so i'm going to dry this out tonight i was thinking that i would not do um the crackle on the inside of my roof line since you're not going to really see much so i decided to take the uh, the acrylic paint and simply do the dry brushing right on the side um, on the darker portions without um, adding any crackles to it. So that's it. So all is done, now I need to start put everything together. So here I have another piece of the shim that I did not actually do the dry brushing on it because I wasn't thinking then. I do want to actually use two shims to create the bottom of my tree a little bit wider, much wider than, than the actual roof line is, because we are really not building the tree. But yes, we are building the tree, if you know what I mean. So I decided to put my roof line right to the back of it and leave the front for some kind of maybe a vignette. So of course, a lot of the hot glue right on the bottom and of course, a little bit on the top. And then you just gotta make sure the glue cools down and everything will be good. I mentioned I do wanted to have my manger elevated slightly, so I'm installing additional piece um, in, a, in you know a little bit, couple of inches from the bottom. So now I do not have a star, so I do wanted to actually see if I can make my own just for the sake of it. So I'm creating um, you know a very simple star made out of the cardboard. I I, I know I do have some metal stars someplace, but I still have to dig out my Christmas stuff. So for now, um, let's see if the cardboard star I just sketched out really quick will work. So now let's paint this and I think um, we're going to be for now okay. I mean, I know that I'm going to be looking for a different star, but just for now. So I'm using again the same acrylic white paint that I did all the other painting and covering completely really thick because the cardboard love to drink some pa paint and it just makes the paint look see-through. So I am adding a good amount of the uh, a chalk paint i mean the acrylic paint and it seems like the star is okay i just need to figure out which position i'm going to install it and for now i'll be fine okay so now it's time to add some little details you know me i need to bring the gold someplace decided to only paint a portion of the baby jesus cradle and actually um th that a little area and then just literally wipe my brush all around the edges um, of the tree slash manger that we were just constructing. It's time to let it dry everything and I'm going to slide all into the little vignette and you think it will be easier and I think there was a paint with the glue right in the little track so it is so hard. So I'm taking a pencil, pushing it over because obviously I do not want to break this. So I decided as I said earlier the venture goes on the back and then Joseph and Mary will just go either on the same level or um, Mary will go closer. I did not decide it but uh, 
I think I am good for now. So now look, this is like a first take on it. And it does look uh, a good, a little bit elevated. And I think my three kings will have a place right now. Because now I can actually put them right on their feet of that little vignette. Huh, look at this. See, we figured it out. And I wasn't really thinking that hard about it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the uh, gold to the edges just to distress it even more, but of course bring this nice um, um, exclusive sheen to it. I'm going to make sure that all the materials I'm using will be listed on the blog so you can uh, find it because I know you would like to know that too. So here we go. I'm going to add my little spool that again I found it uh, someplace in my junk area that I meant to have it for a different project and now look what happens. <coughs> Even the colors fit perfectly. So here I have Dollar Tree ornaments. You know I love them so much and I am constantly looking for them. Man I so hope I'm going to find more of those. So now even my three kings are looking beautifully right there. So I'm thinking I do have three of those trees. So I'm thinking I'm going to add one on both sides of the manger. And then I'm going to maybe insert the third one someplace in the front. Or I'm going to look for some kind of animals. But it's again, I still need to look for a lot of those miniatures to uh, bring more um, interest to my little tree. So now I'm thinking go to the front, to the side. No, I don't want to hide it. So I think the back of it, wow, look at this. The back of it will look actually pretty good. So I'm just going to install my tree right on the back. Sure to add the glue on the right side if you're going to be doing that um, little project. Of course, I do want it to have a profile of a tree facing the, the side that we're going to look so I had to quickly wipe it so now I have a tree on the back glued gently and I think it's time to add some in the front I am telling you like all of a sudden I could be bringing and bringing then I thought I'll just run out and bring some greens but maybe later we'll see but for now I actually absolutely love the drama that this um that this little vignette is creating it's just the star on the top is bothering me a little bit but i know um i'll i'll find it sooner or later that those pieces so now this one i decided to actually install it on a level where the three kings are so i'm now going to uh, crowd the first area word star is dry so now i'm going to have fun with the uh, diamond dust i do want it to for sure the star of bethlehem to be really sparkly so i'm going to add uh, a little bit of the diamond dust uh, and now as i am thinking i'm going to actually bring more interest to the roof line so i'm going to do the same thing probably a little bit of the mud patch to the roof line and then i'm going to um, apply the uh, diamond dust Super happy the way the other uh, diamond dust looks on that uh, on that crackle on the side of the roof line. So a little bit of uh, details here and there, and I think we are going to be all done to be able to make some pictures. So, but before I do this, let's just clean up the diamond dust and let's do the final check. And I think we are good. After, of course, the uh, the star of Bethlehem is installed for time being. And it does look pretty cu cu cute right there, but it's okay. So now here are the pictures. Here is the manger a little bit up close. Um, I, I mean, I absolutely love the uh, the way it looks. I've just added later another Dollar Tree star that I found, you know, in my bag, but I still did not find the big one right on the top. So this is um, th this is what it's got to be for now. But now I absolutely love it. I do see the shimmer. I do see some gold. I do actually feel like that I need to um, install my twinkle lights and I'm going to most likely do a little um, rundown with this in it. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you the pictures how that little tree stable mender, I would say, look like with the light up. not easy to make the uh, pictures um, of the uh, completely monotone uh, uh, project that I've made but I hope you do see it perfectly and here are uh, my little tryout with the uh, little twinkle lights that I've got 
and it does look pretty cool i mean i i just don't have a good light to make a better pictures but i absolutely love what i see so i hope that i inspired you and if i did um don't forget to sprinkle that for me and of course show me your project you made um with um with these items again thanks for watching and i'll talk to you later bye